Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's such a joy once again to welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite Good Life Devotion. The Good Life Devotion, if today is your first time, is a biblically trusted source of the truth of God's word that the Lord is bringing to us in these final days of the church's age on the earth to bring us in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. On the Good Life Devotion, we receive daily truths that help us in our individual personal growth so we can be more effective in the kingdom of God. We shall take a look at a series in one topic and we face from the beginning of the week to the end. And this is going to be another awesome week. This week's uh, message is going to be all about um, assessing ourselves for how far we have come this year and in other aspects of our lives. You know, we have become like a family. In fact, we are a family of the Gula devotion all over the world. And we run together. At the beginning of the year, the Lord shows us so much about the year and how the year is supposed to be. And as we make progress as a family, we want to assist ourselves to be sure that we remain on track and that we finish each year as successful people. You know, the overall success of your life is a summation of the different levels of successes you have chucked in life over every season or every year. So if you don't take time to ensure that you are successful at each stage, the overall summary of your life cannot be called a success. And there are things we do to ensure that we live this caliber of life. One of them is self-assessment. And so this week we're going to look at that subject from various angles as we often do on the good life devotion. Of course, as a family also, just like how the entire body of Christ is, there are different levels of maturity. So there are certain topics that some people hear and they look like this one is not, you know, but there are also some of you who have matured and you know what it means to have goals and to achieve those goals. You know, when you begin to move from the bracket of masses to the bracket of the successful people, you move beyond just living anyhow and hoping that you are making progress to setting specific targets and keeping at the processes until you achieve those targets in life. When you start living like that, I can assure you, you are in the class of the successful and nothing can take you out. But if you are still living in the general level of life where it's all about, I've woken up, let me eat, let me drink, let me go to work, let me come, and there's no specific thing you are pursuing as a goal within any season of your life, you are likely going to be just an ordinary person. 
It takes something as little as that to keep you ordinary. And it takes something as little as that to bring you into the extraordinary class. Self-assessment. So we're going to be looking at that from various angles. And I believe you are excited. I'm also excited because we stepped into the month of September. And so we have just October between now and then the new creation conference in November. So get set. I'm sure from the month of October we are going to start having our new creation conference house as we uh, increase the heat of the fire towards the all-awaited new creation conference 2023 on the 9th and the 10th of November at the National Theatre. Get set. So our topic today is the power of self-assessment. The power of self-assessment. And our main scripture as we are having it in the Mass Peter is 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the 5th verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. And it says that, Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. You know, sometimes in the King James, <laughs> the language can be so serious that even people who speak English wonder what have they said. So let me, these days I like to <laughs> go a bit into um, some of the modern, you know, language evolves. And so if you are not in the old dispensation, you don't understand what they spoke. And it's not any mistake of yours. So it is our responsibility as ministers to see how we can uh, bring it to you in a more understandable um, language. So I'm going to take it from um, the Living Bible. And it says that, check up on yourselves. Check up on yourself. So when they say check up, you understand? For those of you who are used to medical checkups and things, so it's like regularly go and check yourself up. You understand? So that's what King James said, examine yourselves. Okay? Check up on yourselves. Are you really Christians? Do you pass the test? <laughs> Do you feel Christ's presence and power more and more within you? Or are you just pretending to be Christians when actually you aren't at all? Okay, let me see if I can get it for you in another version so we can uh, feast on. Let's go to the New International Version. Now remember, the versions of the Bible are not different types of Bible, okay? They are various translations so that um, people can have the message understood. Of course, the more you have translations, the more the challenges you have with certain portions of the Bible, but that's not a big deal. The good intention is to make sure that everyone understands or at least have God's uh, message in their language. And God is spirit. He's able to communicate his message irrespective of the challenges with translations. So don't get disturbed about these things. Second Corinthians 13, 5, New International Version, it says that, Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. So that's our main scripture, which we just read. And it tells us to examine or prove ourselves in the faith. So, Self-assessment is a scriptural practice. There are some of the principles of life today that some people don't consider to be Christian because the people of the world have so used them and made them business-like that they appear as though they are business principles. But they pulled all of those things from the scriptures. If you go to every judicial system of any country, the foundational basis for their judgments or decisions is the, 
in the Old Testament, was the Bible. But they will not tell you that they are quoting from here or there. They have made them appear as if they were just uh, humanly generated. And of course, they've expanded them to include humanism. Uh, and sometimes you may not even know they are coming from the Bible. So the principle of self-assessment, self even though used much in business terms and the rest, is biblical. In fact, they got it from there. Because the Bible, as we speak now, is the oldest source of information than any current business structure. So self-assessment is scriptural. It's a biblical practice. As a son or daughter of God, are you engaged in that practice of self-assessment? If not, this week, the Lord has come to call you into that practice. What is the meaning of self-assessment? If you look at the Greek words that have been used in the translations for the words examine or prove. If you read the King James, it says that examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. So prove and examine. They, they are not exactly the same, but they are synonymous. And they mean to test something or to assess something or scrutinize the thing. Okay? And the reason is to see whether the thing is genuine or the thing is up to the expected standard. So when you are testing something, when you are examining something, when you are scrutinizing something to see whether the thing is actually what it's supposed to be or whether it's of the correct substance, then you are proving the thing. You are examining the thing. So for instance, you go to school and you say, okay, I finished from senior high and I'm, I'm saying to the whole world that I cannot go to the university. You must write a standardized exam. What's the meaning of the exam? to scrutinize you, to test you, to prove whether you have really qualified or you are of substance to go into the university. That's the original intent of examinations. So you go for a driving school and you have to go through examination for licensing. Why? It is to, to examine and be sure that according to your own claims that you are ready to go on road with a vehicle, are you really ready? Are you up to that expected standard? That's the meaning of assessment. Okay. All right. Now, remember, our main topic is the power of assessment. You first need to understand what assessment is. So, when you are assessing yourself, it is to see whether am I of the, uh, the quality I think of myself to be, am I really of that standard? Okay. That is, a, the, 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 that is what you are doing. You are examining yourself. You are testing yourself. You are putting yourself to scrutiny to see whether you are of the standard that you think you should be. Now, why do we then do self-assessment? And that's where the power of self-assessment comes in. What is the purpose of self-assessment? Why is self-assessment so important? Okay, so I said the power of something, that means its importance. It's the, 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 the special reasons why that thing should be. Two main reasons. Self-assessment um, enables you to achieve your goals. We do self-assessment for the purposes of achievement of goals. Self-assessment is an important aid if the achievement of your goals in life is your real desire. No matter which area of life it is about, if you are really desirous of achieving your goals, you cannot do that if you throw away the principle of self-assessment. So the power of self-assessment is in the fact that one, it enables you to achieve your intended goals in life. If you don't do self-assessment, you are most likely not to achieve your intended goals. And if you don't achieve your intended goals, you are summing up into a failure at the end of the day. But that should not be your portion if you are watching or listening or reading at this time. The second power or the second important reason for self-assessment is that self-assessment enables you to have high levels of success 
in various areas of your life. And these two, they, they go along each other. Achievement of goals and high levels of success. There are different degrees of success in the pursuit of any particular venture. The Bible says that the sower went to sow, and some seeds fell along the roadside, others on stony grounds, others among thorns, and others on good grounds. And even those that fell on good ground, some bore 30%, 60%, and 100%. So for instance, if you are going to school, for instance, there are grades you are supposed to get from A, B, C, D, E, and sometimes F. From D, C, B, A. These are different degrees of successes. Someone can get C, someone can get B, someone can get A. But they are all successful. But there are degrees of success. Are you following? Now, if you want to achieve high levels of success, then you must be one that practices self-assessment. So the power of self-assessment is in the fact that one, it enables you to achieve your intended goals. Number two, it enables you to have high levels of success in life. Now, why is self-assessment able to help you to achieve your goals and also able to help you to attain high levels of success in various areas of your life? There are certain things that self-assessment does, and I'm going to see if I can give you four of them. How is self-assessment able to help you achieve your goals and succeed in life? But I'm going to go on a short break. When I return, I'll take you through uh, those four simple ways by which self-assessment helps you to uh, achieve your goals in life and also to attain high levels of success in various areas of your life. I'm going to be right back after this break. Wow! Somebody shout, glory! Another glory! Yeah! Dr. David Binden and the entire Good Life devotion team would like all our church viewers, listeners, and readers to note that you can now enjoy the entire week's Good Life devotion teachings at a go. Did you hear that? Yes, it is a special Sunday Good Life Devotion Word Buffet exclusively on live TV from 4 to 6 p.m. GMT every Sunday. Get set for a two-hour non-stop session of beholding the glory of the Lord in the mirror of His Word and be transformed into the same image even by the Spirit. Oh, glory. Don't forget, it's the special Sunday Good Life Devotion Word Buffet with Dr. David Binder coming to you exclusively on Light TV from 4 to 6 p.m. GMT. Don't miss it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So yeah, we'll come back and then we're looking at the subject of the power of self-assessment. And we said self-assessment is so important in your life because of two main things. It enables you to achieve your intended goals and that also leads you to high levels of success in whatever you do. Now, how does self-assessment achieve these things? Number one, self-assessment helps you to discover the true state of your activities. You see, you need to know what is really happening with you in the area that you are assessing yourself. I have seen in a few cases somebody selling provisions and then the person just keeps going to buy and comes to sell going to buy and comes to sell. No uh, 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 cross-checking of how much am I buying, how much am I selling, how much am I making. 
So as long as he or she goes to buy and people come to, uh, and come to sell and people are coming to buy and then she takes part of it to, to feed the family, so things are going. She doesn't know what's going on, but gradually the shop begins to decrease. The shop begins to decrease. At a point, the shop closes and then she says, oh, I don't know what happened, but my capital is gone. What happened? Because she was going to buy and coming to retail, she was going to buy and coming to retail, and never assessed to know her true state. She was deceived to think that business was still going on. No wonder when at a point she moved from making profit to recycling the capital. At a point she moved from recycling the capital to reducing the capital. At a point the shop has to close down. So many people have run their lives like this kind of provision shop without knowing. Because they have never been doing self-assessment, because they are just involved in normal activities of life, waking up, sleeping, going to work, coming back, going out, you know, they, they don't know that they've moved from making losses to using their natural energy without gain until they die off. It's very dangerous to live a life without self-assessment. Because self-assessment, if you do it genuinely, will help you to know your true state. This person I just spoke about, if the person chose to, at a point, ask herself, how much did I start this business with? And how much do I have now? So have I made any profit? What's going on? The person would have known that things are not going on well and would have corrected the thing before the shop runs down. But because there was no self-assessment, yet people came every day to the shop to buy, and every day she had something to sell, so she thought business was booming. No. Even when you go and bring more goods, it doesn't mean that the shop is booming. Because sometimes it depends on the caliber of goods. Some goods are more costly. And you might have started with more costly goods, but now you are buying goods that are not costly. So you may see that the quantity of goods have increased in the shop is no indicator that you are doing well. If you don't do a proper self-assessment, you will not know your true state. And this has happened not only to businesses, but to lives, to nations. There are nations that have just been running, running, and they don't know that they are depleting their resources until they get to a place where a new crop of leaders come and they wonder, what was it there? Nothing is there. Because it was all running on normal systems. So are you the head of a company? Are you the head of a home? Even your own life? Whatever. You need to believe in self-assessment because it tells you your true state. And it can help you avoid running down without knowing. Number two, how does self-assessment help you achieve goals and also be successful in life? Apart from helping you to discover a true state, self-assessment... Um, keeps you conform to the original plan. So in self-assessment, you discover, am I still conform to the original plan? You see, some people start selling maybe shoes, and before they realize, they are now selling handkerchiefs. Yet they never planned that I was going to sell handkerchiefs. But every day, people started coming, and they asked, oh, do you have handkerchiefs? Do you have handkerchiefs? So before they, start, they started buying more handkerchiefs than shoes. Probably they received a message from God to sell shoes. So without assessing themselves, they deviated from the original uh, plan and they are into something else. They may think they are succeeding, but they are failing. Don't just follow the natural course of things. That is why if your vision was of God, always do self-assessment to be sure that you are still conformed to the original vision. Being in ministry, this is something I do always. I always go back in prayer, in waiting, and re-examine what we are doing to ask myself because I knew where and when God called and what he said, I will still pursue the original vision. Ministries have deviated from their course. Businesses have deviated from their course. Governments have deviated from their course. Sometimes they come and tell you, when I come, I will, I will do A. But when they get into power, they get distracted and they are now pursuing C. No self-assessment. Make sure you do self-assessment. Number three. How does self-assessment help you achieve your goals or succeed in life? Apart from helping you discover your true state and help you conform to original vision, it also helps you to know what is wrongly placed so that it can be removed. What is not rightly placed so that you can remove it. There are certain things that when you start making progress in life, in business, in, 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 in life, in ministry, in, at work and all that, you start engaging yourself in certain principles and they are the principles that are not helping you to make real success. 
If you don't do self-assessment, you will not find them out. So when you do self-assessment, it helps you to find out what is not in the right place so that you can cut it off. For instance, let's say the lady that was selling the provision shop. If she knew that, okay, I started giving some money out of my business to another person which was not part of the original plan, and that is what is draining my capital. If she discovered that, she's going to uh, kind of stop it. If she doesn't, she would think, oh, I'm making so much profit so I can easily give that money. And then before she realizes, the shop closes down, not because she didn't do well, but because she was giving out more than she was gaining. So when you do self-assessment, you are able to discover what is not rightly placed so that you can cut it off. And then number four, self-assessment also helps you to discover what is making the thing work so that you can strengthen it. You see, so when you do self-assessment, you get to know the things that are making you gain more ground. And then you, you do what? You focus and strengthen such processes. So quickly, these are the four ways by which self-assessment helps you to achieve your goals and to be, attain high levels of success. Number one, self-assessment helps you to discover your true state. It helps you to find out and remain conformed to the original divine plan. It helps you to discover what is not rightly placed so you can cut it off. And then it helps you to uh, know what is rightly placed so that you can strengthen it. In conclusion, we said that you have only one life. Don't live anyhow, hoping that you are making progress. Rather, frequently assess yourself to enable yourself to turn out to be a great success according to God's plan. Are you a Sunday school teacher? Are you a cell leader? Are you a singer? Are you a drummer? Are you an employee? Are you an employer? Are you a CEO of a company? What are you into? Don't just keep doing the regular things and hoping that things are going on well. Sit down, do some self-assessment, and that will enable you to be an overall success as you always desired. Shall we pray? Father, bless your people with light and insight into the reality and attainment of these things that you've shared with us in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're watching us and you have not yet received Christ, this is the ultimate. You must be born again to step into that abundant life that God has for you on this earth. How do you get born again? Believe that Jesus died for your sin, was raised from the dead, and as we speak now, he ascended, is in heaven, and is Lord. Declare his lordship over your life, and you will receive the life of God into your spirit, and you get regenerated to become a son of God. If this is what you want to happen to you, say this after me with all your heart. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe with all my heart that by your resurrection from the dead, you made eternal life available. Jesus, I know definitely that you are Lord. And I declare Jesus is Lord over my life. I am born again. If I've done this with all your heart, truly, you are born again. Surely we are going to meet in our next episode tomorrow as we take a look at this subject matter of self-assessment from another angle. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Benden. Life is good. Enjoy.